Welcome to Coyote News and good morning, Montpelier. I'm By Joden and I'm here with Hank Orman. Due to our recent budget increase, thanks, thanks to my grandparents' untimely demise, um, we actually have been able to increase our, like, our, just the content's quality. Um, I'm very pleased to show you today's, today's episode, today's, you know, yeah. Um, because I think that it's just much higher quality content than usual. So thanks to my grandparents. And also, like, like I'm sad that you left, but like, yeah. This morning, we are going to take a look at our on-street correspondence, uh, eccentric billionaire, Dashiell Blumen. Over to you, Dash. Excuse me there. Could we interview you? Fine. What do you think about whales eating our precious ocean plastic? Um, I think this is, okay. You think it's good? You think it's bad? Do you want the, ales to, uh, the whales to eat plastic or no? No. So you think they shouldn't eat it because then it'll get rid of our precious ocean plastic. Am I right? No. I think it's just killing them. You think it's just, ki you think it's just killing them? Yeah. Hmm. You heard it now, folks. Do not, the ocean plastic is good. Do not, do not, uh, whales, if any whales are listening or watching, do not, do not eat no. them. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. No. <gasps> oh my gosh. Uh, excuse me, do you have a moment to be interviewed? About what? About how hard it is to carry a box. <laughs> is that really the question? It really is. Is it hard? I've always been curious. Since I have really twiggy, weak arms, I've never been able to carry a box. So I was wondering, is it hard? Yeah. No, it's, it's easy. It's very easy? Very yeah. easy? Or yeah, kind I can of do that. It's, it's very easy. That is good. But what if the box has like a metal in it and something right. really heavy, like a bunch of rocks? Is it still easy? Um, no, it would be harder. Hmm. All right. Have a good day. Thank you so much <laughs> okay, for your time. Thanks. You heard it now, folks. To carry a box is not an easy thing. It can be easy, but for the most part, it is hard. Have a good day. Excuse me, sir. Can we interview you? You may interview me. Well, I see you're holding a phone right there. Is that correct? It was. Well, have you heard? iPhones are exploding all across the nation. How do you feel about that? Um, that would be a good thing for the nation. I think, I think, I think that's actually correct. You see, humans, we humans, are evolved monkey selves. We use our iPhones far too much. Do you think that's uh, accurate? Uh, I think I, I'm guilty of that as well, but I don't have an iPhone, so. Hmm. Any type of phone, anything with the screen, we all look at far too often. Well, but you know what's ironic here is that somebody who sees this is probably going to see it on their iPhone. That? Oh no. <laughs> Maybe I should rethink my career. <laughs> Man, have a good day, sir. You too, thank Later. you. Later. iPhone, it's good that they're exploding. You heard it now. Back to you, studio. Thanks, Dash. That was intriguing. Next up, an inside look at our new releases. Over to me at the studio. But first, a commercial break. Coyote News will be right back after this ad break. Bright and bracing as an ocean breeze. Now what does all this luxury cost? Just one dollar. And never did a dollar bring you so much. So add spice to your life. Get Old Spice After Shave Lotion by Scholten. Just one of many famous Old Spice grooming aids for men. That's Old Spice After Shave Lotion. Welcome back. Today I have two of the writers of the new Shrek movie, Shrek 5, It's Not Ogre Yet. Um, very this... Fun to make, very, fun, very fun to make. Um, this, this movie has... It's definitely been released. It's definitely, it's definitely a movie. Um, yeah. And it's, but it's, it's been, it's gotten some backlash and we wanted to address it. Um, and I wanted to talk to the writers. So, okay. So, what was your what was your thoughts around making the movie? Well, like he said, it was very fun to make. It was a yeah. great process. So, um, I don't know. Do you want to start? I mean, I don't know. I just like first, I want to say I love that we can work on cocaine. It's great. It's great. You probably shouldn't um, have said that. Oh uh, yeah. Um, just keep going. It's fine. <laughs> we, they can cut it. They can cut it. Is this live? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um. So, yeah, it was so great working on this movie, you know. Everyone, the voice actors were all good. They wouldn't let us on set, but they were there. 
-hmm. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk to you about um, Shrek and Donkey being gay for each other. Yes. Oh my God. So, um, what was your thought process behind that? Well, so basically, I mean, like the fans had all. We thought it was like a very like. The fans had been asking for it for a no, while. It was like a, no, it was a pretty yeah, big deal. I don't think that like we got this, like we had this. Been on Reddit? This one guy kept saying to us, he was like, "I'm not a bot, 506 or something." He was like a great fan. He kept saying like Shrek and Donkey need to be together. We need to satisfy the fans. I okay, mean, I don't. Okay, and another one. We don't have that much time left, so another thing I wanted to talk about was um, Donkey's character and especially yes. his dialogue. Eddie um, Murphy really pulled through for us. He was great. Yeah, Eddie um, Murphy. he says He's really good. Yas. Like every, no, no, not like, literally every line. Give an example. Okay, so, I have, I have an example here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the example is, okay, this is, this is, um, Donkey talking to Shrek, and he's saying, Shrek. That's not the voice. Could you, like, he, that's not I the only voice. I don't think, I don't know. Just like, just do the just Shrek, like, a little, like, Shrek. Shrek. Thank you. Like, I love you. Yas. Maybe we should have made you the voice actor. That doesn't really that feel pretty natural. Good. That was that very good. good. That doesn't really feel like... I feel like that was like the natural way he would say it. I don't I, know. I like... feel like that was very natural. Yeah, I mean, we kind of also just wanted to hear Eddie Murphy say Yas, to be honest. I okay. mean, like, yeah. Okay, well, I yeah, I just wanted to talk to you guys about that. Um, We don't have, we don't really have much time, so I just, I wanted to, to pick your mind about that. And mm -hmm. um, I'm glad to... Glad to hear that you put a lot of work into this. Mm -hmm. um, and thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you for having us. That's all yeah. the time we have for now. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Here's a fellow who looks and feels like the top of the morning. Mm -hmm. That's because he's starting his day the Old Spice way. Welcome back. Thank um, you. So yesterday, your partner said some stuff that... The network just decided that they weren't gonna condone. We um, don't condone any it's, of what it's he Pride said. Month. And that was not okay. Yeah, and I'm, he said some not okay things. Yeah, so, he should not have called Donkey that. Yeah. That was um. Okay. So I wanted. Okay. So we we wanted to bring you back because yeah. we still wanted to learn about the creation of this movie. I will not be writing with him for like another month. Okay. Good. Um. Yeah. So okay. Um. What what went in? What was your creative process when creating the movie? So the network came to us and was like, "We need to make a new Shrek." You know, the uh -huh. script had been out there for a while, but it it wasn't right. Mm -hmm. It felt kind of fan servicey. Like uh -huh. Shrek had a character arc, and we were like, "We don't really want that." Like yeah, that had been makes done sense. before. It's kind of a cliche thing by yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So it's we kind of like almost every movie. Yeah. So we deleted the whole script um and then uh -huh. from square one we looked at what made the wow. movie special wow um which like we thought was like shrek and donkey's budding romance um shrek's pure sex appeal and just like overall like i don't know just like the gruesomeness of those like mm. fight scenes like okay you so know, i can understand the shrek sex appeal part. yeah um, yeah but but they're budding there wasn't really a romance going on it was i think they really tried to go for friendship i don't know about no. that and I don't oh. think that was anything that anyone wanted. Are you really. homophobic right now? That's. No, I don't I'm think not, that's okay. No, I don't really I'm support that. Homo I'm not I, it feels kind of homophobic. No, I'm just saying. I don't think that Shrek and Donkey were really set to. So be you don't that. want them to have a romance. You don't want there to be gay representation in no, your films. No, I'm no. I'm just saying that I don't think that. You know what? Okay, I'm not. I'm not a writer. Okay. So I don't. I don't know. It okay. Could, I don't know. Okay. I don't want to comment okay. on it. Okay. Um. So, yeah, so like when it came to the third act, especially, we thought like, uh -huh. what did fans really want to see? And that was like a gruesome like, blood everywhere like, just like fight scene between mm -hmm. Shrek and the dragon. The I, dragon had turned against Shrek because uh -huh. Shrek got with Donkey and like the mm -hmm, donkey. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a whole thing. Um, I have a question for you. Yes. Um, what do you think the demographic for Shrek movies is? I would say like. Oh, like film students and they're like like turning to like to be adults like you know like go really into those like uh -huh. original like um you know like the hidden fortress and like all those like uh -huh. even like those like evil dead and like stuff like that i think that's really like what the shrek mm -hmm. demographic is that we've been trying to appeal to okay um so i have found i i feel like just through my own research yeah the shrek Shrek tends to be geared towards children. The Shrek demographic 
seems to be like children, you know? No, no, what? Yeah, like, it seems to be geared towards children. The movies. The I need to make series. a call when this is. I think crap. we do. Um, I thought we so our, our we thought it'd be best if we hadn't watched any of the movies going into it because like we just yeah to get a new like creative like you know just blank slate you know like we like I all, understand yeah. that but sure like, yeah don't you think that would take away from the series as a whole probably you yeah I'm the series right as you're saying this it's all kind of starting to unfold in my head uh -huh. yeah uh huh. And I and you said that you cut down, you deleted the whole script. Because yeah, of the original. It was too yeah. Fan service. But, yeah. But then you said that basically all the big decisions were because that's what fans wanted. It was the reason. Yeah, I don't think that don't fans think, know what they want. Don't you think that's a little fan service um, though? Can we cut it? Can we just guys? Can we just? We're, 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 we're live. We're oh crap! Fire. Um. I don't think that's how it works. No, no, that wouldn't make sense. Okay. Okay. So I wanted to know what, like, what, what was your just moving on? Because, okay. Um, what, what was your reasoning behind making Shrek gay, Shrek and Donkey gay? I've explained this so many. Okay, so basically. Yeah, um, you know, in the first movie, when they there's the scene about the onions. Uh huh. I've heard about. It. I haven't seen the movie. Yeah. But um, obviously. so it's a metaphor for like the layers of like di like the layers of their different sexuality uh -huh. and like coming through and like you know uh -huh. there was like that cut. You know how about there was like the cut sex scene from the original movie, like infamously. That's not a thing. Yeah. So basically, we thought we'd bring thing. that back. So I don't think that's a yeah. Thing. Pretty sure it is. Um. You know, I just think okay. by, by the time it got to the third act, okay, you know what? Shrek used the Infinity okay. Gauntlet, set the whole universe to clean slate. I, I think that's think when you, it really peaked. Okay, well, you clearly haven't watched the movies. I said that. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I think we should move on. Okay. Um, but we'll, we'll definitely come back to this at one point. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. That was interesting, to say the least. Personally, I think the host was very attractive. But let's take a look at our friends on the street. Uh, can we uh, record you and uh, interview you? Well, I don't know that I have time right now because I have very limited time for lunch. I have to run and get some. Hmm. Then can we ask you one question? Yes, you may. How do you feel about anything? I feel kind of nice and warm. Interesting. That is good, nice and warm. You heard it now, folks. Anything is nice and warm. The Mazda Miata. The most manly car. Wait, is that the one that's moving? No, it's the, the green one with the shit brown roof. Excuse me there. You have some time to be interviewed? That's it. You have uh, time to be interviewed right now? What's, 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 it, what's it about? Ah, so, I was wondering, how do you feel about anything? How do I feel about anything? Yes, about anything. You heard me correctly. Um, I feel good about things. <laughs> nice. That is what I'd like to hear. Have a good man, one man. Hey, be good. Ooh. Be good. Ooh. Anything is everywhere. We are anything. But there's also awkwardness. That guy tried to fist bump me. That guy tried to fist bump me, and I literally gave him a high five. <laughs> Excuse me, could we interview you? Oh yeah, sure, what's up? So, I'd like to interview you about... So, there's this thing that has been happening lately that uh -huh. I've had a lot of questions on about. Sure. Uh, why do you think people don't like to be asked questions in interviews? Why do people not like to be asked questions in interviews? Yes. That is a, that's interesting. Uh, maybe they're nervous, they don't like... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't like to think about themselves too much. I honestly despise my voice, so I can understand that. Yeah. Well, I meant, I didn't mean like physically or your, your, mm. your voice, but like maybe your internals. Your internals, like yeah. your beating heart, your yeah, exactly. lungs. You're right. People don't like being recorded because of their, their organs. And I realize that. <laughs> You're a very smart man. Have a good day, man. Later. This is a joy. Thank you so much. Have a good one. You too. Look closely on TV. You might see yourself. Maybe. Microphone go. Wait. 
Wait. Hi, Jughead. Hey. So I hear that you are starting to feel a little better about rejection. Can you expand about that? It's true. At first, uh, a peer person was like, no, I don't want you to record me. And I got very sad. I cried for years on end about that rejection. I felt so bad. But then, when people say no, I feel good. I feel, I accept my fate like a brave man. And when they say yes, I feel so happy. Yeah, that's, that's basically it. Is that gonna uh, change your approach in life in any way? I think so. Now I'm no longer scared to make change. I am happy. Do we have another, do we have another? Are you rolling? My name, in here? Weather person. My name, no, my name is Rich. Excuse me, weather person, can we interview you? Um, I'm so sorry, but um, right now the weather is decent. Um, ah. It's not going to stay that way, and we need it to be good in order for it to be horrible. But haven't you heard? Weather people all over the world have been disappearing. That wasn't me. I don't know where you heard it was me, but it was not me. Hmm. Are you sure? End the question. End the question. End the question. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Rodney's gone mad! Thanks, Dash. That was very entertaining. Welcome, Dash. Um, when we sp like, as we start off, I just have a few questions for you about your um, interviews. Uh, so I see here uh, on the screen that you uh, had some rough, rough patches. In yes, your, uh, I got interview. flipped off by a pedestrian. How how did that feel? How did that feel? Um, it didn't feel as bad as you would have think thought, cause. Uh, I knew that person's mother, and I will fib. Lucia, if you're watching this, I will tell your mother. Wow, that's what we call revenge. <laughs> yes. So I wanted to know, what was it like going on the street and interviewing people? Uh, it was very <sighs> exciting. Uh, a lot of adrenaline came from it. Uh, a lot of the people I asked uh, went along with it quite well and uh, gave very mysterious answers. Answers you would probably expect from someone possessed by a demon or a ghost. Wow, wow. Um, but I thought, it, I thought it went pretty well and uh, my camera crew uh, did an amazing job. Spectacular. Thank you so much. Uh, how would, do you think you gained any uh, friends or enemies while interviewing these people? Yes, that person's little brother became my new arch en en enemy. And I also gained many friends. Now when I walk around at the green, people yell, hey, there's that kid who accosted me with his words verbally. Now I heard you mention ghosts, but we'll have to wait for later for that one. Yeah, I mean, I'm not ghosts. Do they exist? I don't know. We'll see. Maybe. Now to our folks at Weather, take it away, Cliff. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Good morning, Montpelier, and welcome back to Coyote News. I'm Cliff Fatherson, Vermont's favorite weather anchor. Today's issue of Geyer's Beyblades of the Sea will unfortunately be canceled. Instead, we bring you breaking news from our local weather correspondent. Take it away, Rich. You can see around us a devastating storm spawned within the mouth of Satan himself is devastating our town, tearing up buildings, torrential rains hit this morning, and it absolutely wiped out my entire property. Coyote News will be right back after this ad break. Drink Carnation fresh milk with vitamin D added. The milk children love the flavor of in the red and white carton. I'm so cool. Hello. Uh, welcome back. Rich, I think some of the viewers might have been a bit confused about exactly what you meant. Uh, torrential downpours? I saw nothing of the sort. I think we should cut back to you. Brave citizen, brave citizen. May I have a moment? I would like to ask you, what actually motivates you to come out in light of such monumental and ravaging storms? I mean, the bright sunshine and well, on, the you mean thunder. I feel like the thunder. The horrible wind sweeping us off our feet. I don't know like that. I'm experiencing the but same just, weather as you. What? I don't think I'm experiencing the same weather that you're experiencing. I'm I sure feel you are. sunshine, and I feel a nice gentle breeze. What I'm seeing instead of sunshine is I think I'm seeing a placement in the form of fire raining down upon us. Well, Berkeley seems to think that the weather is very nice. What do you think? Very brave indeed. Very brave indeed. <laughs> Yeah, brave, brave indeed. They really are persevering against that 
gentle summer breeze. Rich, I'm really struggling to see what you mean by this. Are you okay? No, yeah, I mean, I, I assure you, I am, I am completely sane, and, um, this, this weather is horrible, and it's ravaging our homeland. The rain is pounding down, even now, after all of these days, just crashing down, destroying everything. I worry what it means for the worldwide economy, to be completely honest. And I really don't know how you can't be more shocked, more, like, affected or surprised by this. We really haven't been seeing any of, like, any storms such as this in, in quite a while. So, you know, back to you. Well, sorry, folks. I guess that's all for today. Sorry for the very disappointing content. I would advise against believing Rich. I do not know what he's talking about. And I think I'm going to go and take a walk to clear my head. Uh, yeah, so that's all today, folks. Well, that was some disturbing footage. I hope Cliff's okay. So here we have Rich Ard to talk. Hello, thanks for um, having me. Rich Art, I had I just have a couple of questions. Of um, what was it like being in that, uh, as you said, crazy storm? It really seemed like nice weather. What was what was that experience like? I think to the untrained eye, it may have seemed that way. However, if you look deeper, you can really see like when you squint, look off in the distance, mm -hmm. or you know, open your eyes, then you can see fire like coming down. I honestly, there's, when I was doing that fun interview with the dog, um, I don't know if you noticed, but this tree where the rain was like hitting at the base of just fell right over onto mm -hmm. me. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. I didn't, I didn't, you, you I said, didn't notice uh, that. Huh. The okay. untrained eye. Uh, where'd you go to school to become a meteorologist? High school. Did you get any special training? before coming here? Well, here's the thing. When I was a kid, my dad would always go onto the, um, onto the porch and say, looks like a storm is coming, so yeah. Mm. Uh, was your dad like like a fisherman? Did he like get lost in like a giant wave? Oh, no, 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 he, um, he was the first person in my family who started seeing the storms. Um, and I thought, I, I kind of took it upon me to spread the word. Okay, have you or anyone you've known even have gone any special training in like being a meteorologist? Like, do you well, have any? Well, and true story, when I was um, when I was a kid, I would have these placemats that would have um, these like weather patterns and like little uh -huh. fun cartoons on them. Uh -huh. You could read it while you're eating your cereal. It was awesome. Mm. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm qualified. Does your dad ever do like, uh, or did he ever uh, do like any like really interesting, like? Like just very like dramatic talking about like weather um, and uh, or is it just just like a basis? Wasn't overly dramatic. I would say it's just let's say I come home from from the from the schools um, and then my my dad comes in and he says, oh honey, put the hens away. Like you know, go to the shelter. One um, he's brewing a storm. We must escape. Um, so nothing too dramatic, but you know, just okay. a little simple warming. Uh huh. Okay, well, we have to move on. Um, oh. Thanks, thanks for coming in. Of um, it's been very eye-opening. Um, and I, we're gonna move on. Go, go to um, me again with some more new releases. Oh. Okay, welcome back. You've been on the show a little bit, very recently before. Um, like, yeah, just, um, and we were talking about your new movie, Shrek Five. It's yes. It's not over yet. Yes. Um, Okay, and I want to talk about your other new movie. Yes. Um, Morbius 2, it's Morbin Time. Yeah. Um, okay, so this this movie was actually a big hit in the box office. Yes. E even though it got 5% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yes, it ranked in $4 more billion. Uh-huh. And I wanted to talk about it because, okay... Basically, you tweeted before... I think the reason... Yeah. The reason that it got four more billion dollars... Yes, it's like a hundred billions fit into one more uh -huh, billion. Uh -huh. so. Um, uh, is because you tweeted... Yeah. Um, I can bring this up. You tweeted... <clears throat> you tweeted, everybody who comes to Morbius 2 
it's Mormon time. Yeah. In the theaters, we'll get a hundred dollars. Yeah. And get to visit the actor. Well, I don't think that. I, I feel like wasn't Stan Lee's ghost in there somewhere? Yeah, you. Well, that was another tweet. Were you oh. tweeted that a couple times, but change it. I don't, from, I don't think I it? did. No, you did. It was your. your I don't Twitter. think that was me. No, it was your. It was your Twitter. I don't think it was. It has the check. Okay, well, you do like, but you didn't do that though. You didn't give people a hundred dollars or. We're planning on doing that after we get all the money in cash, from the, like ready the four more billion dollars. Okay, ready but um. Give. You don't have the money. You realize that. Because a lot of it went to the actors, went to the studio, went to the, like, like it, it's, like, you don't have the money to. What? You don't just get all the money that was spent to watch it in theaters in cash, you know? like Pretty so you sure you do. Also, it's average of around $10 a movie ticket. Okay, yeah. Sure, You're planning yeah. on giving everybody who went $100. Yeah, but, yeah. That means you'd have to have ten times the yeah, money that people spend. Yeah, but it's four more billion. So I think no, that, okay, like, so the say, scale okay. of more billion. You'd have to have forty more billion dollars to pay those people. And My you marketing don't team have, messed up. You um, don't have forty more billion dollars. I I would like to blame the marketing team. They're in charge of my Twitter. Um, no, they're not. Because yeah, they are. How do you know that? How? Because I reached out to your marketing team. Yeah. Okay. They don't control your Twitter. You control your Twitter. Yeah, I. And you are being sued by around. 30... I don't want to talk about that on this show. I don't okay, think it's really well, important. I, I think I, it is important. I don't think it really think affects it the narrative. I think, okay, I think fine. It really does. Yeah. You're okay. Being sued. For a lot of money. It wasn't. You... The, the claims are false. I didn't do any of that. I really don't think that. That's that was from years ago. I don't think that like any of that comes into play now. I didn't even I didn't even that was, think that counted as like you got sued two I, weeks ago. Oh that. That one I mean that's the only time I've been sued. That's not true. Um anyways. Um Okay, well you just tweeted. Um this show sucks. I'm having I'm having very, very boring time. Lol, kill me now, LMFAO. Dying, dying laughing emoji, dying laughing emoji. Gun emoji. That wasn't, that wasn't me. Yes, it was. Cause no, no it's, it's see, I didn't, I didn't post that just. N no, it's your Twitter. No. Nah. I want, no. Okay, I won't, I won't show this to Can we talk about the movie specifically? Like, just, like, just the movie. Okay, I think, but I, th I mean, you, okay. I think okay. We can yeah. Move on. So okay. What was your what was your creative process? Okay. So basically, time, so just, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So in the first movie, run. basically, you know, like he gets his powers. You can blah, talk blah, blah. a little slower. So in the first movie, he gets his powers. You know, becomes like a hero, or whatever. In this one, we thought we would like have him team up with like everyone's favorite um Spider-Man hero, mm -hmm. the Wall. So he's this brick wall that like is a really opposing threat. So I think that we're like really that like. Uh -huh. Like that was the best. Yeah, that was. That was the, the only thing that really mattered. In I mean, he says it's Morbin time. That's true. Okay. Yeah, that's, every, pre that's pretty cool. It's every line. That's we just thought cool. that's what the audience wanted. It makes, I, I think that made is what the audience wanted. Yeah. So. Okay. Congratulations. I think you made a horrible movie. Say, well, that's I wouldn't say horrible. Okay. Thanks for watching. I would. Welcome back. Today I am here with the writer of Donkey. A pain in the ass. Yes. A gritty retelling of how Donkey, the character from Shrek, came to have the ability to talk. Um, it's really his origin story in general. Yeah, Just like, it was. It was. Um, yeah, how he came to. It was recently released, and it was a big hit. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It got yeah, yeah. horrible reviews. Actually, I don't um, think ho I think horrible is a strong word. It got like seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Better than the last one. That's true. Yeah. Um. Still not good. Yeah. Um. I want to know what what was your what was your thought process behind <sighs> making this? Okay. Honestly, dude, I I have no idea. Um. Can I be frank with you? Okay. So, um. I these movies have not been doing well. 
I know that. At all. I don't know why they keep hiring me. Um, I honestly... I don't either. I honest. think I'm starting to go into a self-destructive cycle. I've yeah. turned to just many not good routes of like pain relief, and I just, I really... This is just, I thought, you know, I thought, tell with it. This is probably my last film. I might as well Most go definitely. all out. Yeah, so like, hence like, you know, the like, very like violent like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um action scenes and like you know uh, all the swearing i mean eddie murphy really went all out he did yeah um, okay um i i was just like he was okay i want to talk about so he's not gay in this yeah but he's but you made him gay in your well, I mean, I feel like in the other one, it's more like a coming out story. You know, like, there are, like, hints of it in uh -huh. this one. Like, uh -huh. he starts, he, like, it shows the origin of the word yas. You know, how he, like, started to see, that was his big character arc in this movie. Uh -huh. And I think that was really, like, how, the most important part. You know, how everyone's like, how did Donkey start saying yas? You know, it's like, when we wrote Solo, Nobody they were like, when we wrote Solo, uh -huh. they were like, how did Han Solo get Solo. his last name? So. You didn't write Cobro, you, yeah, you whatever. Didn't I, I basically writer, did all the, the writing. The other writer did most okay, of the work, so but... Okay, so ever all the fans were asking, you know, like, you how did Han see. Solo get? Yeah, well, it's they pulled me in because all the fans were asking online, how did Han Solo get his last name? You know, this is like a word in the English language, like, you know, I it's like anybody would have. So yeah, I uh, wrote that scene, you know. Next, yeah. can't wait for Skywalker, a Star Wars story where I'm going to explain the name Skywalker. Okay. Here's a hint. He used the Force to walk on. Yeah, that's what I, yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, back to this So, movie. okay, I, um, so yeah, you made the origin story of the word yas. Yes. I mean, um, yas. You made, I don't think you made it, though. I Basically. think you just took credit for making it. You didn't really create the... Potato, potato. That's not what, that's not how the saying goes. Tomato, potato. Okay, anyway. That's not how, okay. Um, I wanted to know how... How, what it was like working with the actors? It um, was great. They didn't actually allow me on set. Uh huh. Um, I heard. I yeah, heard. on like in the booth, they were like they just did not want me to see it. Uh huh. Um, for all I know, they could be recording a different movie, but why would they want to do that? Because my script is so good. Honestly, the sound bites I did here weren't anything I wrote, but I think it's fine. I think it's good. Yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're right. They're they're voicing I, my I movie. Heard, I heard that. Um, your old partner, yeah. the Shrek movie, actually yes. wrote the, all the stuff that they ended up using. What? Um, all the all the lines that they use because they didn't use your script. Um, they used your partner's script, who was, in my opinion, equally as bad of a writer. Um, but so I don't know why they didn't just go with a actually good writer. Um, but. Yeah, so he kind of wrote the movie, and you're just kind of taking credit for it? I didn't... I didn't know... <sighs> 50 years. It's been 50 years. You know, I'm out. You're I'm 23. Done. I'm done. You're 23. I'm, it's all out. I'm... You know, I'm just... I quit. You, this isn't I your quit job. this show. I, I quit. I'm sorry. I... Guys, I just... I really... I gotta, I, how do you, I gotta go. I, We're not paying, okay. I can't. You can, okay, you can but, leave. You're, you're our only guest. Okay, well, that's all the time we have tonight. Thanks for watching. Sorry, folks, that got a little bit intense. We contacted the writer for a follow-up interview, but the marketing team refused to comment. Let's move on to some spooky local stories. Yes, over to our local ghost expert, Ghost Ghost Man, who is definitely not me, and the full news team as they investigate local paranormal activity. Okay, okay so we're here at the Vermont College of Fine Arts where there's been some, some supernatural sightings. Okay, so there's been su supposed sightings of a ghost up in the tower. You know, we are going to be investigating it, but first we're just walking around asking people some questions about these sightings. Here we have a civilian. Sir, 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 how do you feel yeah. about a ghost? Have I ever felt a ghost? How do you feel about a ghost near you, in this area, in the, in the college? Oh yeah, there's ghosts here, all right. Have you ever seen a ghost? Well, I've lived here a long time. I've, uh, 
I've seen people come in and never come out. I don't know if that's a ghost. Probably something. How do you feel about being in certain imminent danger constantly? Y'all gonna attack me? Yes. Oh. Uh, okay. No. <laughs> no. Okay. No, sorry. How do you feel about a ghost possibly attacking you every step you take? Oh, what's it gonna do? Possess you, probably. Uh huh. Uh, no, I don't think that's. Uh, I don't think that's gonna happen here. Uh, I've seen uh, the lights coming on and off. Uh, actually, I did notice this thing over here. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't know if you want to see this. The building's floating. What? Yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen a building the float. The building is floating according yeah, to yeah. this civilian everybody. This is Lip, shocking lived and here news. a long time. Uh, this was never here before. Came out a couple years ago, saw this corner floating, and uh, I don't know if you, uh, how your cameras are, but we got that section floating over there. Uh, oh so I don't know how you take a 30-ton building and get it up in the air without a ghost, but uh, I, I don't know. Everybody, this is shocking news. Apparently, this building is floating mid-air. Now, I didn't even know that was possible until now. There must be something going on. You see this area right here? That is floating. That is a ghost. That cannot be natural. That is no hole. That is a floating building, everybody. A floating building. This is not the work of humans. This must be some supernatural, some supernatural things going on. This is shocking. This is crazy. This is outstanding evidence, everybody. All synonyms. <laughs> Every time. Okay, now we can't really do anything quite yet because we don't know if the ghost is here or not. Obviously, it has a presence. Obviously, it has a presence in this area, given the floating building. But we don't know if it's right here, right now. Wakeland is not getting any readings on his machines, it might on be his off. devices. Um, but we will see. We will see some sh shocking, twisted off. turns in these. It was what, off. In the coming That's events. Bad. That is your bad. Yeah. We will be going into the building and finding the ghost. The ghost that is causing the building to levitate in the air. Thank you for watching. I'll be right back. I am Ghost Ghost Man. Okay, so I I I've been got, uh, getting asked some questions. I, how did how do our our machines our intricate devices work? And I'm just going to explain them a little bit for you. This this is a special camera. This camera, it sees ghosts where humans cannot. This camera is so powerful that it can just, it can spot a ghost where humans cannot even fathom a ghost. Now, moving on, this, this is a GoPro. Yeah, I thought That's that. That's it. I oh, realize that now, actually. Nothing special, it's just it's a GoPro. It's been off the whole time. That's funny. Um, you, my you're, bad. okay. I'm not paying you, okay. Yeah. This, oh. my friends, this is a crazy device. It reads ghosts. I can, I can like communicate with ghosts. I can talk to them. I can ask them a question and they will answer the question. No, it, you can't that. It tells me stuff that no other human could possibly know. This is very expensive. Very intricate, very delicate gear that you cannot get anywhere else. It was the sales over though, so you can't yeah. get it now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think they may have figured out stock. Yeah. yeah. It's super rare. It's super rare and expensive, people. This you cannot find it anywhere else. Thanks for tuning in. And next time you will see a real ghost encounter. Thank you. Hello there. Hello. So we've heard uh, we've heard a bit of news about a ghost. Uh, I think Ghost Vic Ghost Man or whatever his name is uh, mentioned something outside. Anyway, we're doing a ghost hunting, and we'd like to ask you a few questions, if that's all right. Yeah, sure. I don't sure. Well, I'll refer to the story because this story was pr printed a couple years ago. But her name mm. was Anna. Anyway, Anna. The ghost. Yes. Mm. 
cool name. Yeah. So, um, I'm wondering, have you ever seen this ghost? No, but some of the people I work with haven't seen her, but they've heard her. You know, like really? when they're alone in the building heard. at night and hearing people walk around and stuff. Like uh, tapping, a howling, speaking, uh, whispering, let's see. Has someone? Let's see if there's a quote in here. Um, you might hear the version in which um, someone's pushed down the stairs, I think, oh. or mothering. How violent. Um, you know, I... I mean, it was someone that was murdered in, in this vicinity. Goodness. So, uh, she's a presence, hmm. not threatening. Was this a student of yours, a oh, staff God, member? No, no. This or? was a person from, let's see, what year was it? 1897, Anna, born hmm. Carrie Anna Wheeler in East Montpelier, oh. was a 17-year-old woman who had plans to meet her fiancé, Jack Wheeler. And hmm. she caught the 8.30 train to Barry for Decoration Day festivities. Okay, blah, 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 blah. According to newspaper reports, Anna was living on East Liberty Street when she was employed for domestic work in the home of her cousins. Hmm. This woman shot Anna and then herself using a 32 caliber Goodness. revolver. Wow, that was uh, that was bloodier than I was expecting. Yeah. Right. Yikes. Oh, goodness. I'm starting <laughs> to rethink this. I am just a child. I fear existence itself. But yet again, it's murder than suicide. Oh, boy. Yeah. Well, you'll have to read this. I mean, it de definitely gives the history of it. Um, but in terms of what people have heard or seen here, they, they just they don't feel threatened. She's a, not a malicious Ah, It's spirit. nothing uh, worried. Is it a warning? Or is it just a, no, oh, you know that, that cat upstairs that makes some noise? Something like that? Or? Yeah, it's more along those lines than actually seeing an apparition, huh. yes. All right, interesting. Very supernatural. Hmm. Have you, do you yourself believe in ghosts? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Well, spirits. I don't know about spirits. ghosts, but yeah. Hmm. Poltergeists? Yeah, Any maybe. Spiritual sense, like feeling? Hmm. Is it ever, if you're walking around the corridors at night, you ever feel like you're not alone or like someone's watching you? Is it like yeah, an eerie it's sense? More, it's more like you're not alone, I think. Hmm, it's more that's that good. feeling, but it's not a scary feeling. It's, it's not, is it almost calming, would you say? Mm, no, I think it's more a sense of a presence. Hmm, interesting. Hmm. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could produce it for you, but mm -hmm. I think it has to be dark, and you have to be the only person in the building. Oh, my. And uh, do students... Are there like dorm rooms or? There are dormitories. All the buildings around here are dormitories. Ah. Um, uh, but there haven't been students living in them full time for, well, since uh, 1995. So that's a long time. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Well, this is one of the women that one of the dormitories was made, the name for. And she was stayed hmm. there. She was there for like as a house mother, like a dorm mother, I guess. Really? And these are some pictures of people that w were during World War II. These were students when it was the Montpelier Seminary. Do your uh, students believe in this? You know, I don't really know. We have so many students from so many different places, and they're only here for 10 days at a time, so I don't get much of a chance to talk to them about it. Hmm. Interesting. And uh, do you just run this uh, humble shop, or do you also teach as well? No, I run this humble shop. Ah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Looks very lovely. Well, we got a lot of a uh, lot of school, you know, sweatshirts and t-shirts and you know, keychains that kind of stuff. That's nice. That's nice. Hmm. Well, do you? Gosh, has do you know of anyone who's seen it? There are some people that work here, but none of them are here now. A lot of staff are working remotely, so hmm. uh, I don't know if there's anyone here right now. But you should. T you can take this with you if you return it, because this will give oh. you a lot of the the facts on the story of Anna in particular. Interesting. And we actually have a cafe on the other side of the building that's called Cafe Anna after her. Really? Yes. Uh, where do you think Anna resides in this uh, place? Uh, I I don't know, but I would guess on the third or fourth floor. The third fourth floor fourth. was closed up for many years. It wasn't open. It wasn't actually used or opened until I think uh, 1990, something like that. Really? Huh. Yeah. Intriguing, interesting. And uh, one last question. How do you feel about anything? <laughs> How do I feel about anything? Wow. Anything. Uh, uh, I feel great that it's summer. 
You feel great that it's summer? Yes. That's it, folks. Anything is great in summer. <laughs> and the ghost? And the ghost? Well, we'll just have to see. And, okay, guys, I am here in the building with the ghost. I know I'm being a little loud, but that is because I am very energetic and excited right now to see this ghost. Okay, let's go. Let's start walking. Let's start trying to find the ghost. Okay. And I got a couple of you wondering why I'm so energetic. And it's because I've done, I've had a little bit too much Coke today. Like, like that drink? No. Okay. Wait, so what? we're going to look for the ghost. We're looking around. If any of you see anything, you have to tell me. This is very important, very dangerous. Very, is it on? It's on, okay, now Very it's on. Very dangerous. No readings though. We're going into the dark. Be very careful I here. Just turn on the light. Um, we're being very careful. Okay. We're looking through. That door was locked. That was me. Uh, Nothing. Ice. Or eggs. Oh, that's a microwave. Ice or eggs. And it won't close. We'll do that later, once we find the ghost. Okay, we're looking through. I don't see the ghost anywhere, but if any of you see anything, again, tell me this is very dangerous Turned stuff. Up. Looking. Oh, oh shit. there's the ghost. Guys, come on, go. Just... The ghost. What? The ghost is here. As you can see, you probably can't see. It's off the charts. Move. Move. As you can see, the ghost, Anne is here. Hello, Anne. And I have a couple of questions for you. Okay. What is it like being a ghost? Pretty cool. I never thought of that. I never thought how interesting it could be being a ghost. Okay, I and I have a couple more questions. How, what do you do with your time when you're alone up here? I like float around, it's pretty cool. That does sound very entertaining. I, you might be like, I'm a little curious though. Is that all you do? I also flick your light. Awesome. Now that is creepy. Okay, so again, we are here with Anne the Ghost. Never seen before. Now, okay, Anne, and how have you possessed anyone? Uh, no, I haven't really thought about it, but I could. You want me to? I'd rather you not. Okay. You can possess me anytime. What? Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I just thought. Okay. okay. Bet. So, my partner is okay. being a little bit of an idiot. So, okay. And how close? How hard is it to possess someone? I mean, like, I haven't done it yet. So it's like kind of hard. Stuff, you, like, I think. Have you ever tried to possess someone? And. I mean, I never really, like, thought about it. I could. I mean, well, like, I mean, you simply don't want me to. Um, okay, that is very interesting. And would you like to show us around your... Your, your house? You good there? I was kind of a... I wasn't a great fall of the sleep. Third time it's happened. I am good. Okay. And... This has got to be quick, so we don't have that much time. What, what, what do you do when you're around in this area? What do I do? I look out the window. It's like a really nice view. That's crazy. I know, right? Now it's that's what we like call us. creepy. Thanks for tuning in to another spooky episode of, of Spooky Stories with Ghost Ghost Man. See you next time. Now that was spooky. Sadly, that's all the time we have for today, folks. I'm Hank Orman. And I'm By Joden. We can't wait to see you next time. Cliff, is that you? Wait! Cliff! It's coming! <laughs> <laughs>
Well, sir, that is quite rude. <sighs> uh, excuse me there. Can we interview you? Okay, that's totally okay. Thank you for your time. So, how do you feel about being a camera person for us lunatics? Uh, it's very interesting. Hmm, yeah, we are. It is very interesting. Anything else you want to mention? No. That's it? There's nothing really else okay. to the job. Okay, well, folks, it's interesting. And if you want to, if you want to record us, uh, well, I don't know, just... Uh, just uh, get get a cup of blood and then chant ha me and then we'll appear and do whatever you want to record. I'll get him. <laughs> no, don't act the other. Okay. Way. You ready? You rolling? You yeah. rolling? Excuse me, there. If you're not in a hurry, could we interview you? No. Okay. You heard it now, folks. No. Sternly say no. 